Let's go live with my parents starting today. They're my parents, so there shouldn't be any problem, right? My husband surprised me with this idea out of the blue. I was shocked and almost cried because I never expected it. Isn't this too sudden? My dad just passed away, and it's only been a few days since his funeral. I'm still grieving his loss after he fought a long battle with illness. Despite all the sadness from the funeral, my husband decided we should leave our home. We headed to a villa my dad left for me. When we got there, I found out my in-laws were already there, staying in the villa. My name is Natalie, and I'm 33 years old. I work as a designer and have recently started living on my own. I've been married to Justin for three years now. My career is going well, and I'm known as a good designer. I earn a decent salary, and the apartment is in my name. My mom passed away when I was in college, and last year my dad was diagnosed with cancer. He was getting treatment, but it got worse, and he eventually passed away. The doctor told us to prepare for the worst. My dad was really important to me. When I found out he was sick, I was devastated. Watching him get sicker each day, I couldn't sleep because I was so worried and anxious. What did the doctor say about your dad's sickness? Is he getting any better? Should I, as your husband, go see him? My husband kept asking about my dad's health, but I didn't feel like he really cared. It seemed like he was just waiting for my dad to pass away. Before, my husband used to feel insecure because he earned less money than me. I wished he would be proud of my accomplishments and support me during tough times, but instead, he acted childish. Always trying to compete with me and wanting to be better than me. My dad told us not to worry about him and to focus on our time together as a couple. But I think we should visit him while we still can, that way we won't regret it later. I started to dislike my husband more and more. In the beginning of our marriage, I felt a lot of love from him, and we were happy together. But now, his insensitive comments about my dad's illness were too much to handle. I realized that the loving husband I once knew had changed, and it was hard for me to accept. My husband works from home. I planned to work from home too after becoming independent, but he said having someone around distracted me. So I rented a small office and started commuting. Even though the hospital was nearby for me, my husband stayed home all day, leaving all the chores for me to do. I had to juggle work, taking care of my dad, and coming home tired to find a mess my husband made in dishes he hadn't cleaned. He only cared about himself and didn't consider my feelings. Living with him made me realize how little he understood me, and I felt very lonely. After my father passed away, we had already sold our family home as we had discussed with him before. I was busy with funeral preparations until we headed to the funeral hall, but my husband seemed more focused on phone calls or disappearing than helping me. Justin, please help me, especially now, I pleaded with him, but he brushed it off saying he had work calls to attend to. My frustration with my husband grew as he seemed distant and disinterested during this tough time. His attitude had changed, and he appeared colder than before, leaving me feeling even more sad and isolated. On the day of the funeral, he spent a lot of time chatting with his parents, and their smirks and the looks from others made me feel even more alone. Despite the smooth handling of the funeral procedures, my husband suddenly suggested that we move in with his parents. He said it casually, almost as a joke, but I couldn't believe he would suggest such a thing, especially after the loss of my father. Live together where? We don't have any spare rooms in this apartment, I countered, reminding him that our apartment was already quite full with one room used for his work materials. Then he mentioned the villa I had inherited from my father. I was taken aback. That villa held special memories of my father, and I wasn't ready to let go of it. But my husband seemed unconcerned about my feelings and continued to push for his parents to move in despite my objections. 
His parents had already made plans to move, and there seemed to be no room for negotiation. Whenever I spoke up, my husband didn't seem to like it. He accused me of being selfish and said I'd neglected our home because of my father's illness and frequent visits. His words were harsh, and they made me feel like my world was crumbling. Now that your father is gone, you need to listen to me, he said coldly. He complained that my father's illness had dragged on for too long and that it had been hard on him too. His lack of empathy for my father and me hurt deeply. I remembered how much pain my father had endured during his illness, and I knew he wouldn't have wanted me to just do whatever my husband said. At that moment, any love I had for my husband seemed to disappear. It hurt even more to realize that my husband was more focused on getting the villa than grieving my father's death. Despite my warnings, my husband was determined to move his parents into the villa. I decided to go along with it, but I couldn't hide my sadness. I packed only the essentials and left our home, telling my husband I would come back for the rest later. I couldn't bear to exchange any more words with him. It was painful to see my in-laws moving into the villa, seemingly without any consideration for my feelings. But I followed my husband silently, refusing to accept that my special place would be taken over by his selfish desires. Even though it's technically called a villa, it's just a regular house by the sea, located in a normal neighborhood where people lead ordinary lives. But it's conveniently close to the city center, and the land it sits on is valuable. As I stepped out of the train station, memories of my childhood flooded back. I remembered when my mother was still alive, and after I fell asleep on the train, my father would carry me home on his back. The sight of the familiar scenery brought back those bittersweet memories. When we got to the villa, my in-laws were already there. I felt suspicious because it seemed like my husband had secretly given them a key without telling me. The idea that they had planned to move in without anyone knowing made me even more uneasy. Inside the villa, my in-laws seemed excited about their future life there. They admired the sturdy furniture my father had chosen which had a slightly different European style, probably influenced by my mother's taste. They couldn't stop praising the villa, saying how perfect it was and how lucky they were to live there now, instead of our cramped apartment. They seemed to completely overlook the fact that my father had passed away and only saw the villa as a luxurious house. My husband joined in with their insensitive comments, laughing as they toasted the move with beers. I sighed deeply as I prepared some snacks, feeling frustrated and alone as I observed my husband and in-laws. Memories of precious moments with my parents at the dining table felt tarnished. Despite my discomfort, I decided to keep my feelings to myself and endure the night. However, the next morning, the peaceful atmosphere of the villa was shattered by my mother-in-law's loud scream. I quickly realized something must have gone wrong. As I woke up, I saw my father-in-law and husband fussing around. While I took a moment to reach the source of the commotion, in the bathroom, my mother-in-law was on the floor, holding her foot in distress. The floor just collapsed beneath me. She gasped, clearly shaken by the sudden incident. My husband and father-in-law didn't seem to understand what had happened, insisting that the floor looked fine. They checked the spot she pointed to, but the floorboards appeared smooth and undamaged. Despite this, my mother-in-law was convinced that the floor had given way. Seeing their confusion, I suggested, have you tried stepping on that part of the floor with a slightly different color? All three of them were taken aback and focused their attention on that spot. Stepping forward, I used my slippered foot to press on the differently colored section. Well, what was that? The floorboard made a clear sound and slightly sank when I stepped on it, but it snapped back into place the moment. I lifted my foot. If someone stepped on it unknowingly, they'd surely think the floor had collapsed. See, the floor sinks a bit. It's kind of like a trap. Wait, that's dangerous. Is there something wrong with this house? My explanations seemed to surprise and worry them. 
I calmly clarified, it's not a problem with the house. My father intentionally installed it like this. Why on earth would he do that? They asked, puzzled. It's a feature of what you might call a mechanical mansion or a trick house. You see, my father was a big fan of ninjas. This villa was his pride and joy, and he loved adding all sorts of clever mechanisms to it. As a child, I often watched him work on the house, adjusting its mechanisms or adding new ones. That's why there are traps and clever mechanisms all over the villa. A shelf you shouldn't touch, a floorboard that drops when stepped on, a door that only opens in a specific way, hidden doors, and even secret rooms. This villa is a testament to my father's dreams and ingenuity, developed over many years. While I, having grown up visiting and learning from my father how to operate all the traps, have no trouble navigating them, it's a different story for my husband and in-laws, who are unfamiliar with them. I did warn you that living in this villa would be challenging. I'd also told you it's a place filled with memories of my father. My father's intense ninja obsession is well known among our relatives. It's surprising that you didn't know about it. My husband claimed he hadn't heard, but now he was speechless. My in-laws were equally stunned by this revelation. With our apartment lease already cancelled and nowhere else to go, they looked to my husband for guidance. Amidst this, both my father-in-law and husband accidentally triggered another trap, causing them to fall. Seeing them on the ground, I couldn't help but chuckle. Feel free to stay as long as you like, I said though my tone was more sarcastic than sincere. They had been dazzled by the villa's luxury, ignoring my warnings and showing no interest in my father's hobbies. Now their oversight was catching up to them. Even explaining the dangers of the traps fell on deaf ears. This isn't a big deal. We'll get used to it, my husband responded confidently. Acknowledging his comment, I said, I'll head back to the apartment to prepare for our move. However, in reality, I had no moving preparations. I planned to take a few days off and spend time sorting through my father's belongings. As expected, after just two days, my husband and in-laws had had enough. During that brief time alone, I found comfort in solitude and began to see things in a more positive light, making plans for my future. Before long, my father's villa became a small tourist attraction in the neighborhood. It was regularly featured in local newsletters as the trick mansion hidden in our residential area. When the villa was occupied, curious people would come to visit, drawn by the intriguing tricks. Looking back, I remembered seeing strangers touring the villa and local kids playing around, making it a lively spot. My father had listed both the villas and our old home's phone numbers in the newsletters. However, since our family home was sold and its number inactive, all inquiries came to the villa's number. Thanks to my upbringing, I was able to handle calls from foreign visitors who didn't speak our language. But my husband and in-laws couldn't understand foreign languages at all. On top of dealing with the stress of constantly worrying about the traps, they were also overwhelmed by unexpected visitors and handling calls in languages they didn't understand. Exhausted and sleep-deprived, they stumbled back to the apartment. Why do we all live in this apartment together? Think about it. They had hoped for my father's passing to take over the villa, only to give it up after just two days. Instead of offering them tea, I handed my husband the divorce papers, already filled out and stamped. There's no way we can live together from now on. If you understand, please leave quietly. I said with a deep sigh. My main reason was that I couldn't forgive him for disregarding. My feelings and acting insensitively without discussing it with me or giving any explanation. My husband had made the decision for us to live with his parents, and he had never shared household responsibilities with me before. He left all the chores to me and seemed indifferent to my feelings. He acted selfishly and secretly decided to move in with his parents. I couldn't see myself continuing to live with someone like that. What happened? 
You used to love me, right? My husband's question, filled with his usual cluelessness, made me laugh. Do you think I could love someone who wished for my beloved father's death and would rejoice when he passed? I handed him the divorce papers and drove the three of them out of the apartment. First of all, this is my apartment. If anyone has a problem, it should be you leaving. My husband raised his voice, not caring about the neighbors. But I stayed calm. Natalie, I'll call the police for trespassing. If you don't want that, leave quietly. Remember, this apartment is under my name. Their silence followed my words. They depended on me financially and had little of their own. However, I had already decided to cut ties before they could try to persuade me otherwise. Neither my husband nor my in-laws had much in savings. After being kicked out of the apartment and unable to return to the villa, they now live in a cheap, low-quality apartment and are struggling to make ends meet. The previous apartment was better. This was a sentiment my husband and in-laws often repeated. At first, my husband felt guilty and apologized frequently. However, as time passed, he became increasingly resentful of his parents. They were rarely able to hold down jobs due to their age, and when they did work, it didn't last long. Eventually, they depleted their savings and pension, with each move leading to constant arguments and a strained family relationship. The walls of the apartment were thin, so their daily quarrels were easily heard by neighbors. Even when they received noise complaints, they didn't apologize. Instead, they reacted defensively, causing them to become disliked by their neighbors. It seemed like they might need to find a new place to live soon. While my husband used to enjoy working from home, the current apartment didn't provide the luxury of a dedicated workspace. Unable to focus on his job, his reputation and sales suffered. Now, he barely makes ends meet with a late-night convenience store job and may need to consider taking on multiple part-time jobs. The in-laws realized their biggest mistake was allowing their son to control their decisions. In their frequent arguments, my husband and in-laws often blamed the villa's traps. If you had been more responsible, we wouldn't be in this situation. You should have checked properly. Don't blame me now. She's the one who kept important things secret. Shut up. If you had communicated properly with your father, this wouldn't have happened. I never imagined we'd end up like this because of our son, yet they had always wished to inherit the villa and were overjoyed when my father passed away. I will never forget that. After the divorce, I made significant strides in my career as a designer to cope with my father's death and all these events. I created designs incorporating ninja elements and shared them on social media. Their popularity grew rapidly, and one day, a major cosmetics company reached out to me. To my surprise, they wanted me to design packaging with an Asian touch incorporating ninja elements. I felt this work would honor my father's cherished memories. Of course, I eagerly accepted the project and poured myself into it. In the end, it was a huge success. This opportunity catapulted my career forward, allowing me to share joyful updates at my parents' graves. I kept the mechanical house, preserving it as a special place filled with memories of my father. I began organizing tour schedules and with a few adjustments, transformed it into a space where both tourists and local children could enjoy for free. Soon, the house garnered significant media attention bringing in much-needed income to cover ongoing expenses. Additionally, online articles about the house were translated into foreign languages, garnering support from international fans, including elderly individuals who shared my father's passion for ninjas. I'm committed to maintaining this magical place for years to come. Meanwhile, the mechanical house remains a bustling hub of activity. Particularly popular among local children, is this the legendary mechanical house I've heard about? Where are the tricks? Show us. With the help of local volunteers, precautions are taken to ensure the children play safely. 
foreign tourists are often amazed by features like the hidden floorboard doors. Wow, this is incredible. I'm so moved to experience such a unique place. What other tricks are here? Despite losing my father and going through a divorce over the inheritance of the villa, I believe the gains have outweighed the losses. The villa has transformed into a memory-filled destination shared with loved ones. Personally, I've undergone a profound transformation, moving forward with renewed optimism and hope.